Okay, good morning. Uh, we're starting uh, the mini lecture this morning. Um, I'm going to be going through the active reading process. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to be looking at the same story um, that I posted up today. And this uh, mini lecture is going to kind of model my thinking process as I'm reading this uh, piece of work. So you'll notice up at the top a few things. Uh, this is another story that I've written. It's a travel story. Um, we've got our, our semester, which is I-2020. Um, and the focus of the lecture, of this mini lecture, is going to be active reading strategies. And in particular, you can see that I've kind of highlighted three of the um, literary devices or the short story elements uh, that we learned about yesterday. Similes, metaphors, and this one's new for today. This is personification. And personification is uh, another uh, level two or sometimes uh, I'll also call it a level three. It's more advanced uh, in terms of what the concept means. And basically, this is when uh, the writer of the story uh, will give lifelike qual qualities to a non-living thing. So a rock or a river or an ocean are given uh, qualities that are spoken about in the story like they're a person. That's why we call it personification. It means to give human qualities to a non-living thing. Okay, so as I read through, I'm going to be looking for similes, metaphors, or uh, examples of personification. So the title of the story is The Stork Tree. The most epic thing about Pokhara was the stork tree. Of course, when I first saw it, I had no idea that it was the nesting place for hundreds of saintly spirits. But I was impressed anyways. So even within that first sentence, uh, interestingly enough, we've got this clip of language here. Um, and I might actually highlight this because it's a comparison, right? So anytime we see a comparison, uh, immediately uh, your, your kind of uh, literary alarm bells should be ringing because you know that when things are compared in literature, often we do it either indirectly as similes or directly as metaphors. So do you think that I literally mean that there are saintly monks or saintly individuals climbing up into the tree? Probably not. Um, and as the story will reveal, I'm comparing something to the saintly spirits. Um, so I highlight that and then I will just put a little note or comma in the sidebar where I'll say metaphor because it's a direct comparison, right? I'm comparing um, storks, as you can probably predict, um, to saintly spirits, okay? But I was impressed anyways. It was huge and hoary with a web of ancient branches twisting up towards the sky. So that's a nice descriptive sentence. I'm giving um, some imagery so you could you could you could call this uh, section you could say descriptive passage or descriptive sentence. The word hoary um, means old and kind of covered in an unclean bark or like uh, it's often used to describe a large and old feature of nature quite often trees or or a bush or something like that and it means kind of unkept um, its bark was black gray and stained with centuries of growth and it sat at the turning point where the old city met the new, newer tourist road Pokhara is pulse is a pulsing hive of activity with its tangles of roads in the lowlands beside the lake. Beyond, in the mists, are the foothills, and beyond them, the Himalayas. All of this infuses Pokhara with its own particular spirit and culture. For one thing, space is limited, so you, crowd, you are crowded, you are a bit, you are, oh, there's an error, you are a bit crowded with the Himalayas as your neighbors. The whole town is crammed in between the lake and the foothills. The road, roads twist and converge like a nest of snakes in the spring. Aha! So here is our next example of a comparison. So again, we can, we'll highlight this one and maybe we'll, we'll, what we'll do up here is, since those are being highlighted uh, in yellow anyways, we'll go with blue for, uh, blue will be metaphors, okay? Green will be similes because you can see here that it's got uh, the word like in it. So this is a simile, a simile number one. I'm comparing the roads um, to a nest of snakes, right? The roads twist and converge like a nest of snakes in spring. But there is one key junction that caught my eye the first time I passed that way. 
there are three roads that swim together. Okay, so there we go. That's an interesting example of something. What do we have there? It's not, not a descriptive passage. It's not a simile. It's not a metaphor. Okay, this is our first example of personification because I am giving lifelike qualities, human-like qualities to the roads. They're obviously not human, so we can write that down as our first example of personification. And then they merge, uh, for on the other side is the massive tree, the stork tree. Indomitable, with its family of branches that spread in a sea-draining net, it immediately caused me to stop and stare. Okay, so here we go, this is our next example. Is it direct? Is it indirect? What type of a comparison is it? All right, there's no use of the word like or as, so then we can uh, we can identify this as our second example of a metaphor. Good. It immediately caused me to stop and stare. Then I saw the massive wall of jagged stones and an ancient ring of protectors, like an honor guard. It surrounded, so this should be which surrounded, good, which surrounded the huge tree and elevated it. More impressively, every branch of the imposing carbon bank was covered in knotted, colored flags. Yellows, reds, greens, and blues all feature prominently. Many were covered in Sanskrit runes, while others appear just to be strips of cloth. Author offerings all. Okay, did you catch the next set of comparisons there? Right, so I compare the jagged stones to an ancient ring of protectors like an honor guard. So we've got that word like in there. So we know this is going to be... simile. And so when you're actively reading, especially because I've identified that we're looking for these particular elements, these types of uh, uh, short story elements, it's a good idea just to mark them on the side here like we're doing, right? And then you can, you know, also kind of um, talk about or, or have an internal conversation about anything else that jumps out at you. So I've also been kind of editing or doing some notes about the way that sentences are set up or if there's a word missing or something like that. And, you know, one of the things about these short stories that I'm putting out there, they're all original short stories up till now. The first one and the second one that I put up there are short stories that I've created myself. Um, so there, there is sometimes editing that needs to happen, right? And so as a reader, that's a good thing for you to take note of. If you think, oh, this might be expressed better in another way, you can add that to your discussion of this, uh, of this story. Because ultimately what we're doing is we're building, we're moving towards um, being able to write analytical paragraphs about these short stories, right? Um, so did anyone catch the next comparison, right? Every branch of the imposing carbon bank. So again, there we go. I've made a, a direct comparison. So this is another example of a metaphor. So you could even, you could even, uh, you could even like talk about it in greater depth, right? The tree is directly compared to a carbon bank. And then you might you might also see something like this, you know, um, in terms of theme, we notice that the author is talking about climate change and the value of trees to combat this dreadful global trend. Right, so the, these are the types of things that you should be making note of and thinking about as you're, as you're reading. Then you might, something like this might come up. So if you're, if you're not familiar with this, you might ask, what are Sanskrit? Words. And Sanskrit 
if you're not aware, is an ancient language um, that's common between um, some of the ancient peoples of India. Um, so it makes sense that Sanskrit runes would be here in Pokhara because Pokhara is in Nepal and India and Nepal have some cultural overlap. Although they're different countries today, some of the groups that live in Nepal one, at one time also uh, had territories in India and vice versa. Okay, good. Keeping, keeping on with our progress here, we're starting page two. When I saw this mighty tree, I stood there transfixed in that, in the, that first moment as motorbikes scoot by. They blare their horns without thinking, but as I watch, a pair of monks walk by in their orange robes, and they bow to the tree. In that instant, I know my gut reads true. This tree is sacred. There is something special here and I log the tree away in my treasure room. Okay, so I might, I might make a comment here, I might think. This is an interesting image. What does the author, the author mean about logging This seems to predict that the author puts more value on things he sees, like trees, than on actual physical so that's another theme that we might want to track. Okay, carry on. So then, as always, the moment passes, and on I go. We walk through the town, and we see the famous French alley with its amazing dining and inevitable haughtiness. She suggests that we stay at the hostel she'd been at before. I suggest we find something new. We argue, we eat. The food is amazing in the garden that wanders down to the lakeshore. So, there's another example of personification, right? So, lake, uh, uh, sorry, gardens don't wander, right? So we can say personification number two. That was the second example, right? So we've got simile number two. There's personification number one. Yes, okay, we are. And obviously, there's a few um, descriptive passages that I haven't highlighted, uh, but I. I, as I showed you up at the very beginning there, we're kind of primarily focusing on these three types of elements for the moment. Okay, three old women with faces like catcher's mitts try to sell us singing bowls over the fence. They were brought over the mountains with the Dalai Lama, they say. We laugh and then refuse their offer. So what type of a literary uh, device did we see in this little chunk of language here? Three old women with faces like catcher's mitts tried to sell us singing bowls over the fence, over the fence points. So you nailed it. It's got the word like in it. So this example here is an example of simile. Very good. Okay, so we will put that in. This is simile number number three, I believe. Good. Okay, so that's just, I'm not going to go through the entire story, right? It's, it's uh, another few pages long. Um, and so what one part of your um, activity for today, of your, of your assignment for today, is I want you to complete the reading with the same type of active strategy where you're thinking about the major themes that are uh, becoming prevalent and looking for uh, other examples of metaphor, simile, and personification. Um, once you're done looking at these elements in this story, then you can go back and do the exact same process for short story number number one, tubing the puntlage that I uploaded yesterday. Okay, so this is just our first example of active reading and taking notes as we read. Excellent work. Uh, I will put up the formal assignment in a worksheet.